And we're back, everybody. I have to start out by immediately prostrating myself before Cypher because I... I, in my utter foolishness, suggested that somehow he might not have defeated Kalinto in a best of five. When indeed he did, I remembered his happy dance and I felt super duper guilty that I said that it was going to be life coach Kalinto. It's going to be life coach Cypher. And I mean, what a spot to be in. He's in the semifinals here. Big rep in his new team. Fade to karma. Uh, life coach, obviously, repping his team. Hill him. And uh, the big German, been playing great today. Cypher been playing great today. I mean, to take out Kalinto, obviously, outside of the Archon Team League is uh, is no small task. Monk, what do you think about our next setup? Uh, it's pretty great. Um, Cypher, of course, you mentioned he's on that new team, Fade to Karma. And that team is just filled with heavyweights, even though it's pretty much just a very new team that I believe just formed last week. Um, some of their other players, like Hawkeye, like uh, Deathlore, they both competed. Uh, first of all, they both qualified for Gfinity over the last weekend, and they both competed at that tournament. So it just seems like even though they're a new team, their players are just showing up in every single tournament. Just great representation yeah. overall. Big statement out of those guys. Uh, one thing worth mentioning, uh, obviously this is looking a little bit farther forward into tomorrow, both Cypher and Life Coaches lost to Surrender, and Surrender has been killing it, man. Like that South Korean terror that everybody kind of feels bubbling in the pit of their stomach, but isn't necessarily sure if it's really there. Surrender really looking like the face of that at the moment. We're going to go into game one, though. We'll see which one of these guys is going forward. Surrender going to be playing tomorrow. Right now, it's all about Life Coach and Cypher, who again, <laughs> I prostrate myself before and beg forgiveness as he did beat Kalinto. And move it along. I mean, good play by both guys here. Smart play by both guys. Life coach, I'm feeling like he's got the edge on play quality over the course of the day uh, with some really impressive play there in the, in the last set. But, uh, you know, Cypher, he's had a little bit of time to rest. Life coach took himself a little breather, so he's in good shape. But here we are, game one, getting it started. Yeah, I think uh, Cypher, you have to also give it to him. He's brought some, like, Pretty unconventional decks. I think like pretty much everyone at the top levels, like everyone who just competes in tournaments every single day uh, and who gets invited a lot, plays like you know they play hunter, they play warrior, they play warlock. Pretty much the big three in terms of classes, and um, also maybe sometimes they play freeze mage and rogue. But cipher, he's actually brought a tempo mage. We're not seeing it here, but it's certainly an interesting pick. Yeah, right now and just to run back over him, we've already seen these guys today. But cipher running hunter, warlock, mage. Life Coach, Warrior, Druid, Hunter, the three that he's bringing to town. And keep in mind, guys, this is uh, going to be playing. This is semifinals one. One of these players is going to be going to the finals. Some uh, some big money hustling up for grabs. It's going to be uh, Void Walker. And uh, going to grab an Acidic Swamp Ooze there is Cypher as uh, Creeper out for Life Coach. Now, again, we're seeing that kind of anti-weapon tech in the Acidic Swamp Ooze. Pretty much like... That card has been come has become almost as popular as Big Game Hunter. Just like so all these tech cards awesome. targeting what their opponents will bring in, it kind of makes sense in, a, in this kind of like bracket format where you pretty much know who your opponents are going to be. I think in a format like just an open tournament where you just bring three decks and you don't know who you're matched up against, I think that's going to be less common. Yeah, absolutely. I I do think there's an argument to be made for it though. I mean, you've got uh, Oil Rogue. You've got hunters. You've got the patron warriors. So there's a lot of there's a lot of use you could get out of them. But you're absolutely right. If somebody really wants to mix it up on you in an open tournament format, could find yourself in trouble. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, conquest going to be a little bit more conservative here, a little bit more playable. And and cipher and life coach both doing a good job so far today, uh, doing research into their into their opponents and and bringing to bear just really some some quality play. God, those those life coach games are really good. Very very technical. Yeah, but it's uh, very enjoyable. So again, Life Coach, I think he's going to be in a bit of a problem here because, again, he has two hundreds mark in his hand. And obviously he was teching for something. I'd really like to get uh, like ask him after this match, like, hey, what were those two hundreds marks for? But they've both, like, in two games out of the three he's played with that with this deck, um, it's coming to, like, bite him in the ass right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, two Hound Masters is just... Uh, what? Maybe later, maybe later they'll uh, they'll find their way into use, but he's got to make it to later, and Warlock is going to have plenty of time to work, especially with the aggressive deck Cypher's running here. He's going to get a board full of happy, friendly faces, uh, just a smile at Life Coach, and just that Void Walker presenting a problem now as Life Coach got nowhere to go, so he's going to have to just sit here and watch the Warlock get a board developed. 
Yeah, just uh, Cypher playing on curve, playing well. Um, you couldn't really ask for any more. Um, meanwhile, the Hunter, he just really doesn't have anything right now. He doesn't have like any beast to buff up on the board. Um, so pretty much, well, unless he like draws into something miraculous, it's going to be Unleash the Hounds, which is, isn't even going to be that great. I mean, it's going to clear off the Knife Juggler and the Void Walker, but then after that, Cypher will just be able to fill up his board once again. And again, Life Coach on the next turn, he won't ha he'll like be faced with the same problems. Yeah, Eagle Horn Bow going to come out, which, you know, it's a nice one to throw on if you are a little bit more on curve, but uh, as the situation is, he's, uh, like you said, it's Unleash the Hound says the look, and, you know, maybe... Uh, I don't know, you don't want to spend the Hunter's Mark this early, do you? Get, uh, I, I think you have to here. I mean, you have to use yeah. the Hunter's Marks for something at least, or they're just going to be end, ending up dead for the rest of the game. Yeah, it's and especially, I mean, I don't know if you saw Cypher's games earlier, so Life Coach may have that information, may not, but, uh, I mean, Cypher really uh, zooming it up, filling the board over and over again. I mean, he's already got the implosion in hand. Uh, he's got power overwhelming, got the abuse of Sargent, and uh, he's going to draw into another Void Walker. Life okay, Coach so, just going to pass it across. So Life Coach just uh, equipped a weapon and passed. And I think, uh, first of all, that tells you he hasn't unleashed the Hound. So second of all, Cypher, yeah, he has that ooze tech. And I'm not sure if he, Life Coach saw that ooze tech in a previous game, but uh, this is certainly going to hurt him, at least right now. Life yeah, Coach, he, again, like... I think the Cypher should have made the read that there was Unleash the Hounds here, so maybe he shouldn't have gone like so all in at this moment. And yeah, oh my I god, agree. Knife Juggler's drawn. That's oh, that's amazing. So he's gonna have Knife Juggler unleash here, and he's gonna get plenty of juggles. We'll have to wait and see where they go. Cypher's expression gonna change very, very rapidly here as he sees this drop. And just gonna watch it happen. He'll have to wait and see where they go. Obviously, he could still get lucky here. I mean, Really want to eat up a couple of these, and he's going to get himself a little imp out as things start to roll across. Gets one to face. Wouldn't mind a couple more to face, and uh, yeah, going to clear it out. Uh, but I mean, not the worst possible case there. He does keep his walkers up, and uh, those are going to have to uh, eat up a couple of hounds, but not terrible for Cypher, but he did spend an, an absolute ton to get this on the board. Yeah, I think uh, at least one thing that Cypher might have going for him is that at least he has an implosion in his hand. And because you've seen Unleash the Hounds already, it's less likely that there will be a second one. And um, there's not much that Cypher can do, or that Life Coach can do against Unleash the Hounds. But again, this is a pretty heads up play here because Life Coach, he's, he sees that, okay, if my opponent implosions, then at least I'll have a Hound on the board to buff with my Hound Masters. Indeed so. That's, so. Just thinking ahead all the time. Yeah, life coach, you know, and a good quick play on that one as well. He knew what he needed to do. He didn't really have a whole lot of options, but he played it through. It was basically that or just sit around and wait for his eventual demise as Cypher filled the board up in a big way. Implosion coming out. He's going to get four. Got the egg in hand as well. So, freezing trap and a hound master. Maybe hero pal if he wants. Got to be hero pal. But you know what? The, because of the form, four plosion, as we like to call it in the uh, Hearthstone scene, um, there's pretty much a... Uh, like, it, Cypher will be able to contest the board once again. So even though there's a, a huge Unleash the Hounds combo that went off, uh, pretty much this board is going to be kaput once again. And uh, it's uh, going to be up to Life Coach to draw like into Night Dragon Unleash again, maybe? I don't even know. Yeah, nice clear there for Cypher Knife Juggler. He's going to get one. But uh, not a lot to use it with, and obviously the Void Caller, scary looking guy, not any terrifying demons in the hand for Cypher right now, and Freezing Trap, the look. Followed up with the Juggler, just to have something around to keep him warm at night. <laughs> Steady shot back over. Yeah, pretty back and forth game at the moment. Yeah, staying ahead, but just... Just so, as a Void Caller sitting there, and Cypher now with the decision to make, he's going to grab a Power Overwhelming. And, I mean, he could pretty much just swap that out if he wants to throw a big bunch of face damage on. He's going to get the Freezing Trap popped, burn it, send out the Void Caller, and get a, get one right back, Egg as well. Yeah, uh, Cypher, he, he hesitated very little on attacking that Knife Juggler, and I have to believe that's because he saw his 
uh, Life Coach's last few games, and he saw that, okay, I know Life Coach, he only runs Freezing and, and uh, Explosive Trap. There's no way snakes are going to come onto the field. And, because if it had been snakes, that would have been pretty huge. Yeah. Steady shot, down to 11. And the Explosive Trap's in place here as the Imp Gang Boss lands in the hand for Cypher. He's got Power Overwhelming still sitting around, waiting for something fun to work on, and the egg's out. So... Plenty of room to work with it as he's got eight mana in hand. Yeah, I think the uh, play here is pretty clear. But I think the real question is whether Cypher will tap. Does he feel comfortable enough going to uh, 9 HP? Or does he fear like something like a lot of quick shots falling up with each other? In the, um, in the Nerea versus Life Coach series, we saw Life Coach. He was using two quick shots. And he actually drew into two quick shots like back, almost back to back of one another. So I have to think that's on Cypher's mind. Gonna trade over and use the void collar for hugs and kisses. Cypher's still waiting on it though. I mean, really thought about that tap, decided to go with it, and he's gonna pull a seed giant. That might have been a misplay there, just uh, because he killed off that uh, minion first. Maybe he wasn't able to play the seed giant. May have been able to get it out. Animal companion here for life coach. He's giddy. He's like, ah, oh, huffer. Uh, no, Misha. <laughs> He'll take it, but he 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 was hoping for something a little bit better. That would have just put it right on the edge. An Arubian egg for Cipher, and a sea giant sitting around. So things are gonna look scary for Life Coach. He's got he's got that Misha sitting at the front though. Not a whole lot he can do though with that uh, and Arubian sitting there. Yeah, I think. Uh Here's going to be another moment of truth because does Cypher want to attack with a 4-4? Is he afraid of um, Explosive Trap or is he afraid of Freezing Trap? Because he's already seen one Freezing and you have to consider Life Coach, he probably runs two Freezing and one Explosive. So it's pretty much a 50-50 chance that it's Explosive and 50-50 that it's Freezing. He kind of guesses wrong, unfortunately, but it probably doesn't matter too much. Yeah, might have been able to do a little bit better value there, but uh, yeah, not too bad. We'll get away with it. He'll throw four damage up. He'll pull the explosive trap, get the sea giant out on the other side of it, and be in generally fairly good shape. Life coach, not too happy at the moment because there's not a lot he can roll uh, into. Got to get a freezing trap. So I think uh, from our perspective, we know that life coach is dead, but if Cypher somehow he misplays this and... Um, attacks with one of the four attack minions first, then it could still, um, then Life Coach still maybe had another turn. I, we, ex I, we expect, definitely expect Cypher to make the right call, though. Player yeah, we would, <laughs> we would hope. Hopefully. But don't hey, don't prove been, us wrong. It's been a long day, and the time zones might, uh, yeah, they're okay for him. I think Life Coach sitting an hour later than Cypher, so let's send the Void Caller back, and then just big up it. There you go. Yeah, even if care of. yeah, even if he sent one of the four attack minions, it wouldn't really have mattered. But yeah. I'm glad. Uh, even, yeah, I'm, so. gl I'm glad Cypher made the right call still. And yeah. just a, <laughs> I would have to say pretty well played, but um, I might have to question that turn where he just kind of went all out, put everything on the board, where he might have been able to make the read that his opponent did have an Unleash the Hounds and Knife Juggler combo. But I think at that point, he was so giddy that he got um, a full 3-2 Eagle Horn Bow from the Nisig Swampoos. He was just like, okay, I think I've won this game. That's fine. That puts him behind in a way that he's not going to be able to face trade anything over. Cypher takes, I mean, game one convincingly there against Life Coach. Like you said, he he definitely got very aggressive. He didn't end up paying for it. His Life Coach didn't have a great answer. And uh, game up for Cypher. Life Coach, probably going to take a minute and think about that one, as he is wont to do. And uh, Cypher sends his uh, Warlock into the pile. He's going to have Hunter and Mage left. Okay, so Warlock versus, yeah. Warlock's so, out. Uh, Life Coach got uh, Warrior Druid Hunter left. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Hunter and Mage left for Cypher. Yeah. So, so. Um, yeah, this Mage that's, again, we have to focus on that Mage that Cypher is bringing because that's kind of like the odd pick that n pretty much no one brings the tournaments these days. Uh, the Tempo Mage especially. I mean, Nyria did bring a Freeze Mage, but that's way more common. Then Tempo Mage, you have to think that its best matchup is against Midrange Druid. And indeed, Life Coach is bringing Midrange Druid. So I think uh, just even though Life Coach is up, um, or rather Cypher is up 1-0, I think it's even more lopsided in favor of Cypher the series is. 
So life coach going to be running uphill here. I mean, we saw him. He's just been having trouble pulling what he needs out of this druid hand, uh, even at the best of times here. So could be a rough spot. I mean, Cypher with solid play there early on. Again, just a big way to announce yourself if you're fade to karma. A big tournament, big prize pool to be showing up in and uh, doing a great job. And some really tough competition thus far. Emperor Thor Sand grab on the first pull for Life Coach. Yeah. It's a pretty terrible hand from Life Coach. Now, we yeah. saw Druid. It's been kind of failing recently in tournaments. Um, for example, in the Archon Team League, again, I have to reference that, um, that happened last week. Savitz, one of our Liquid players, he went 0-5 with Druid. And I believe overall, the record for Druid in that tournament is something been like 2-11. and 11, Which means that Druid, like, it's just been a horrendous win rate. And a lot of it comes down to basically that they don't get wild growth in their opening hand. And I think, like, people often joke that, hey, if I don't get wild growth, I lose. If I get wild growth, I win. And more and more, I have to feel like that's becoming more true because um, like every other deck has just been improving so much. Whereas with Druid, there haven't been too many improvements. So if you don't get that wall growth in your opening hand, you're pretty much like behind the other decks by a lot every single time. Yeah, I mean, it's been a lot of that uh, over the course of really, yeah, for a while now is you get innervated at the wrong time. Wild growth doesn't come out and they just end up waiting for a swipe to clear the board that they've been able to do nothing about uh, and not getting that. It's, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of weights in a Druid deck that can uh, that can end you up just sitting and staring. Cypher gonna take the damage and get himself a kill command. Pretty happy with that. And he's gonna throw out a second Creeper. Yep, pretty, much, pretty slow and steady game here. There's a... Uh... I mean, not much to be said. And unfortunately, Life Coach, this is the problem with Druid. If you, you just draw into all these minions and you don't get wild growth, you're, you're pretty much dead for the first few t t turns. And it's really these aggressive decks like Hunter that can punish it um, so easily. Yeah, I mean, that's just a terrible, terrible set of numbers running across there. <laughs> My apologies, he throws Animal Companion out. Cypher knows basically what the situation is here for for life coach he's sitting on a hand that he can do nothing with he's going to pull swipe which is uh, you know going to come in handy here uh, as the board develops for cypher and uh, you know it's pretty much all he's got right here he's got an innervate so force of nature's there he's store sands there so he can make things a little bit cheaper for himself but uh, cypher developing a pretty scary board right now yes life coach he has to decide at this moment how how behind do I think I am? Does he go for the play that like uh, helps him not lose the game immediately with a uh, swipe clearing off the board with of most of its power, or does he go with a play that maybe um, gives him more power later on the board by innervating on a Thorzane and hopefully just getting enough value off the Emperor to uh, come back in this game at a later stage of the game over the next two or three turns? Yeah, and certainly the clear is just there and ready for Cipher, so you know you're going to get just that little bit. I mean, is it a, such a hard call here uh, for Life Coach to have to make? He's not really happy with any of it. Uh, you can tell he's going to run things through, rope burning away, as he still can't quite decide it's going to be swipe on Amisha. Yeah, I think he's deciding that he has, because the if you swipe here, there's only two power left remaining on the board. So maybe from that, he can come back by just curving out really well. Um, the other thing is that if he swipes at this point, he'll be able to get out of Dr. Will the next turn, which sometimes might be difficult for Hunter to deal with. But as we can see, there's a Hunter's Mark in Cypher's hand. Yeah, Hunter's Mark and plenty of other stuff as well with that kill command in there and the quick shot. So he's got just plenty to deal with. Even the high value cards that Life Coach is sitting on, he's not going to be able to make any high value turns. He's just going to be able to put out big old lumbering cards and... Uh, Wait for Cypher to shoot him in the face, which is not ideal. Houndmaster there going to be, you know, one more annoyance for Life Coach to have to deal with. Yeah, like you said, it's just all these annoying minions on the board, and it's kind of what Hunter is all about. You get these minions on the board that are so good that, um, like, pretty much uh, minions that have, like, all these death rattles. So even if you, like, clear off the first half, like, the death rattles will come back and get you. And that's what Hearthstone yeah. is all about, getting you. Yeah, <laughs> thinking, you know what, I might be able to do this, and then you pop it, the death rattle comes in, or somebody goes on stable portal and just pulls, you know, Malkanis or something, and your day's ruined, and you pop 
punch your monitor, and then you got to buy a new monitor. It's a whole thing. Dr. Boom to play for Life Coach. Pretty much the only one he had there. He's got a Keeper of the Grove sitting around. So he's starting to trend towards an amount of mana where he'll be able to get uh, some of these cards out on the board. But, uh, I mean, still just been not drawn in a great way. Obviously, Keeper of the Grove not going to allow him to double up value on Dr. Boom or anything of the sort. And still no wild growths for him. Hunter's Mark there. Going to clean that up. Tidy. <laughs> for Cypher. And that's going to hurt if you're life coach. Yeah, pretty much uh, dealing six damage with... Uh with a zero mana spell, it's pretty much like a super backstab at this point. And it's pretty much uh, going to dash all hopes of Life Coach coming back from this game. Well, he knows that's spent, so... <laughs> now, if somehow magic happens on the Thorisand turn and Cypher becomes just... I don't know, he falls asleep for a turn and he gets a little bit of extra cost out of it. And then Sylvanas, Life Coach, just drawing high cost all game. Nowhere to go with it. The boom bot just mocking him right now. Look at it there. It's judging. And uh, to be honest, is this really a board that you want to play Sylvanas into? Probably no. not. <laughs> yes. You want to take that gambit. You get the web spinner. You pop it. King crush game. Well, actually, at, at this point, life coach would probably just cry <laughs> at the cost of king crush. But... You could get uh, you could get Mukla, turn it around, give Cypher some bananas. It's fine. Yeah, uh, no really good options at all. Like no. Slide Coach witches he had a swipe, and if he did have a swipe, this game would actually like it might be pretty close because again, Cypher he's running out of cards. He just has uh, the the Savannah High Main, and maybe if Life Coach can somehow miraculously deal with that, he might be able to come back. But right now, it's just oh my god, Grazilla as well. God. Life is uh, not being kind to of life coach here. Is, I mean, Cypher looks primed to really just put the hurting on him. Still 16 life left in the tank. So, I mean, life coach might just end up in a great spot with the high main on the field. Keeper of the Grove spent, uh, threw some damage down. It just keeps getting worse for him. Is Cypher just playing? I mean, like drawing or randoming into the curve. As yeah. well. Ugh. Again, I mean, we, there, there's some uh, druid observer bugs, but I'm sure everyone who's like watched Hearthstone in the last two weeks, yeah. a little familiar with that one. You're 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 around. You know what's going on. We'll switch it back, and there we go. Uh, as we can see, acidic swampus just being green and ugly and pointless right now for life coach. And uh, yeah, man, where do you go? You got seven mana, so whatever you want to throw out, it's going to be Sylvanas. Yeah, this. I mean, there's not a great option for him here. We'll see uh, what he ends up dropping. I mean, it's all just kind of like, well, let me do this and hope. Maybe I'll force the high main to trade into it. Iron Beak Owl grab for Cipher. And uh, that's it once again. Even gonna need it actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like the druid just couldn't keep up all the time, and it's just about those like first two or three turns. And even though Life Coach, he had some decent draws, he got some like decent swipes. Uh, I don't know what he could have done about it. Yeah, I mean, and you look at that and you see, like, even if Life Coach had been out of lethal range, I, you know, <laughs> there was an Iron Beak Owl draw. So, again, the RNG gods have touched Cypher today, and uh, he is pulling really strong right now. Life Coach down 0-2. We've seen the reverse sweep. Cypher pulled it off against Kalinto. Life Coach now, the man with his tournament life on the line. In the semifinals, I mean, they're playing to move on to some big cheddar. Yeah, I mean, it's been a long day, but it just could end right here with a quick 3-0 from Cypher. Certainly not what we would expect. And especially since Cypher, his last, his one of his last decks is, uh, or rather his last deck is Tempo Mage, which just like completely counters mid-range Druid. There's, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of... It's a lot of rough patches that Life Coach is going to have to come through. Even if he switches it up right now, even if he switches it up, gets two wins, he's going to have to pull that Druid back out and throw it up against the Tempo Mage uh, in the game five if he manages to make it there. So Life Coach rocking a hard place right now. You know what I mean? And, and honestly, not really reacting on webcam with the passion that we're used to seeing from him when he gets those bad draws. So maybe Life Coach just resigned to it at, in that last game. Hopefully he can find some pep some vim, some vigor, 
and uh, you know, give Cypher the stuff. Life Coach has been wont to uh, take some short little breaks in between games here so that he can collect himself. And uh, after that game, i got to imagine he really needs to reconnoiter because, again, uh, big play on the line here for him. This is a very big game for Life Coach. Yeah, I mean, he's gone so far. He's had to replace sides of time, first of all. He's played all these matches, and he's made it so far that I just can't imagine that he wants to go out right here. He has had a championship early, earlier in this year with the uh, V-Game House Cup number three, but I, I, you have to think that he wants more. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, just brilliant play so far today. Uh, High-level strats, really well thought out moves. Cypher doing very much the same, though. I mean, you can't take it away from Cypher, but Life Coach, the guy that's battling right now, Cypher, comfortable. He's got breathing room. He can, he can give up a game. He can give up two. You don't want to. That makes you start feeling a little nervous. But uh, you know what? He's got a pretty solid mage play here going up against the Warrior. We'll see if he can, we'll see if he can burn it out because uh, I mean, he played pretty solid early. I want to say he went up against a Patriot. Their odds are pretty good he went up against a Patriot Warrior earlier in the day. But it's been a very long day, and I haven't slept in 27 hours, we'll call it. Well, it's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, uh, we've all been awake for a really long time, especially like since we've been watching Life Coach play. Yes. We're <laughs> we're getting we're growing older with him though, and that's a special experience. You know? Mm -hmm. We get to look back. I remember when Life Coach didn't have the beard at the beginning of the of the tournament. And, Earlier uh, in this game, he was clean shaven, I swear it. It's funny because uh, Cypher is, uh, he hasn't grown a beard at all. It's just genetics, I guess. Yeah, that's, I mean, you, you, you got people that just can't, just can't grow one. Cypher, one of those guys. Hair hasn't grown either, which is very strange. Perhaps in between games, he takes one of those vacuum cleaner hair cutting attachments and just runs it over real quick so we don't notice. And then he hides it out of sight before we cut back. Mm. It's the only thing I can imagine. So. Yeah. Getting to this game, I mean, Cypher, he's just, uh, he's playing around Fire War Axe, pretty standard thing to do. Um, even though players have been cutting, like, one Fire War Axe from their Patron decks, I mean, it's Fire Win Axe. Who would have thought to cut it? But right now, it appears because it's such a combo deck, the Patron Warrior is, it seems like the thing to do. Man of Worm, Mirror Image. And uh, I gotta say, Cypher earlier with the Owl... Yeah. Owl Array? Is that... Is my brain? Oh, it shut off. Yes, uh, the Alarak pull out of uh, Unstable Portal uh, to win it. Not necessarily win the game. Got 12 damage out of it, though, and not bad for an Unstable Portal pull for uh, two mana and, uh, you know, whatever on the other side of it. So Cypher getting some luck with those. Had a pretty good pull. He had an Arcanist come out of it as well. Didn't end up working out great for him. But, hey, the Unstable Portal's been friendly to Cypher so far today. Life Coach. Given considerable thought, he's got some plays here on two mana. Yeah, Uncivil Portal can be just such a crazy card. In the uh, WCA North America qualifiers, we saw someone get a... Uh, uh, he, was, he was Tempo Mage against Freeze Mage, and he got um, Trade Prince Gallowix into Melganis, and that was just turned into an unlosable. Oh, I saw him. that! Yeah, oh, that's... Oh, man. I remember that was a fantastic game because you just go, uh, and he, he didn't even end up, was it uh, Death Star V3, I think? Yeah, it was Death Star. Yeah, he didn't even end up playing it. <laughs> he didn't even end up playing the uh, Malganus, I think. Yeah, and he qualified to a tournament in China because of that draw. Just the crazy yes. things that Unsaving Portal can do for you. So it's a beautiful thing. Alec here is what I was thinking. I've been playing a lot of heroes, so I've been saying a new Barak a lot lately. So I, I, fi I figured it out. My brain finally caught up with what I was trying to say earlier. Life coach now got, uh, he's got a BGH right on three. Bam, perfect. As soon as the mana worm gets up to uh, seven, he's going to drop that. It's going to be fine. Unstable ghoul, and he's got his fiery war axe in there as well. Yeah. And he I could, think uh, maybe, like, life coach, he has to think about how, not only does he, like, how he takes back the board, but how he's, he puts himself in a position to actually win this game. And you have to think, like, in some instances, like he has to somehow set up a patron turn, I guess, because like these mirror images, they're so annoying. Um, this is kind of like the equivalent of the snow chugger in mech mage, but in the tempo mage, kind of like the mirror images have replaced the snow chuggers in order to like really deal with their opponent's weapons. Yeah, it's been doing a nice job, but if there's anybody that's been 
turning playing to stay alive into winning a game, which is a hard thing to do. It's been life coach so far today. It is going to be the BGH drop. And Cypher going to grab Thorsan here, nice and early. And pull the portal, because why not? Oh, Lightwall's actually pretty good. He can't play it this turn, because uh, I think he probably wants to get rid of this BGH. But uh, just in general, like five fives, even though it can possibly uh, die later on, it's a pretty solid drop, I'd have to say. Yeah, not bad value for money there. And uh, it's going to be able to play it for one. So it can't hurt too bad, especially with the mirror images still sitting around. He cleaned up the uh, BGH handily. Uh, Life Coach pulling into a frothing berserker. And just, I mean, yeah, not a lot of wiggle room here. He's still waiting on stuff. He's got his uh, his unstable ghoul, but, I mean, what a not a great value on that with both of those mirror images still sitting around. Yeah, just a one mana card that, like, it's usually pretty inconspicuous, but just how much damage has it done this turn? I mean, it's actually the, uh, the mana worm that's been doing the damage, but in reality, you have to think, like, the mirror images are pulling at least half the weight here. Yeah, and I... Yeah, he's going to have to get through him. Death's Bite looks like maybe the play. No, he's thinking about a life coach. I mean, it's a tough decision to make here. You're going to have to play something that's not going to get optimal value because really Cypher, I mean, Tempo has been on point here uh, for him. He's been able to really play into things very, very nicely, getting great value out of the Mana Worm. And uh, yeah, he's just going to have to start working that Death's Bite through. And hope he can land somewhere nice while that uh, mana word keeps embiggening. Yeah, just, Flame Waker Mirror Entity. Entity. If, if you just like add up uh, how much like this mana worm has done over the course of this game, it's it's done one hundred percent of the damage, and Oof. that's pretty much uh, he's done around fourteen damage, I believe. Are we just gonna watch Cipher walk this one down? Execute. Sure, okay, but uh, that doesn't solve Life Coach's problem on the far side of things. He can get the Mana Worm off the field at a massive cost to well, himself. But uh, yeah. this is actually like a workable turn because you can uh, just hit your hit with your fire, with your Jet Spite, execute maybe the Mana Worm, then throw down the Frothing and the Unstable Goal, and you can kind of call it a day. You at least like stem a lot of the aggression on the board. Yeah, force an answer out of Cypher, maybe, because right now there's just nothing to be scared of. But it's a super scary spot because, oh, man, so you got Thor Sand, Dr. Boom sitting in the hand over there, Flame Waker as well. Uh, not flush with spells at the moment, but certainly if he wanted to play six, uh, get the Waker and the Mirror uh, Entity played. Could do a little free damage. We'll see. Life Coach got some decisions to make. Patron going to be the drop. All right, so instead he's going for the play that he's going for like the winning play basically. He's saying like, um, okay, I'll deal with this mana worm, but you have to deal with the patrons, and it's certainly a fair call because you've seen your opponent play um, the uh, one flame cannon and one frostbolt, so he probably doesn't have like that much removal left, right? Yep, sorcerer's apprentice going to be grabbed. It's a fair assumption, um, and certainly, I mean, seven. You got to be thinking, okay, Doctor Boom, I got to get something working before seven. I, I mean, if I just sit here and kind of take a pounding to the face, Boom's going to really put me to the edge uh, when we get there. Thor Sand in the deck. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's got uh, he's got options here. Does a Cipher? He could. Yeah, he can't ignore him, especially now with the Berserker in hand, especially now with the Unstable Ghoul there. So there's the actually. Side. There's actually an interesting interaction here between the, the light spawn and the patrons. If you actually attack one of the patrons, your light spawn goes to uh, one attack, one HP, which lets your opponent um, actually just run their patron in and just spawn more patrons. So it's kind of unfortunate. Like we're like kind of hyping up how good this four drop was that had five attack, but now it might just turn to be a detriment instead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a nice little, nice little interaction there. And he did. I mean, he just ignored. Uh, he ignored the patrons. He's gonna. He's gonna sit on it. He thinks he's in pretty comfortable position, and that life coach might not have anything that he can do about it. And really, he doesn't have a whole lot of things that he can this turn. And boom, gonna come out next time around. He's gonna get good value on everything else, says the Thor sand, dropping prices like it's a Kmart going out of business sale. 
Yeah. Yeah, th his real problem here is like he can't deal with both these creatures on the board, which is just really unfortunate. Solve one problem and then stare at another one. It's going to be Fiery War Axe. He's going to do his Launch. best, though. Yeah, I, Life Coach again. It's I mean, it's got to be he's got to be operating full tilt there. He's going to spin it on down to one. And nice. I mean, that's pretty much making the best of it. You're at nine. You've got a taunt. It's going to help you get more stuff out, uh, armor up, and really force Cypher to deal with a problem here as your board starts to build up. Obviously, you're going to be forced to pop uh, the ghoul, so if you're not quite ready to run through Life Coach here, you could end up taking a big bunch of patron hugs to the face, axe-wise, next time around. Yeah, and even here, the problem is, like, I think both players think they're in a pretty bad position because as Life Coach, you don't have really quick ways to gain armor, and you're afraid that your opponent has, like, some kind of fireball damage. And as Cypher, you're seeing all these patrons, but you don't have any way to deal with it. And the typical Tempo Mage deck, it doesn't have flame strikes, so that's yet another issue. I wonder. Yeah, no real way to, to clean this up. Boom. Gonna be the play. Okay, so he's actually gonna be hoping to get some really lucky boom bots here. Um, if it goes to face or if it is able to clear out these patrons, um, either could be pretty good. Worst case, he could just fill the board. Oh my god. And so bad. Worst, worst case, he does get four uh, and pops one of them, but uh, that's six patrons on board. Cypher, hand on face, waiting. Frothing Berserker, both of them in the hand. Uh, he's got an Acolyte of Pain as well, and a big old board full of angry-looking drunk dwarves. It's not a good thing to be staring down. He's got himself a Fiery War Axe as well. So but... More than enough damage on board next turn if Life Coach doesn't clean up. I think typically you play around um, the double fireball, but I'm not so sure here because if your opponent had di double fireball in the last turn, at 7 mana, he would have been able to play it because of the Emperor Thorazane that uh, was on the board two turns ago. And a Life Coach, he's going to make the call that, yeah, he's not going to play around this like super rare um, combination of cards, and he definitely uh, he gets that right. Yeah, and I, I mean, Life Coach, not a guy that would miss the math on that for sure. Uh, he really is trying to make sure where he needs to put things down here. I mean, obviously, he's going to have to give over two of his little patron friends, but he's going to have a nice-looking board here as he gets both frothings on board, and they are going to stack up big. Cypher now turned around on his Life Coach again. That plan to stay alive, turning in to uh, <laughs> playing to win. Is a big one. I mean, he made it. He decided to make an aggressive move just a couple turns ago, and and now he's in a very very solid position. Unstable portal out. Yeah, you and have to. Cypher, not gonna hesitate. Just get a Deathwing here. And Deathwing. Oh, Tyrion. Tyrion. That's, <laughs> that's not uh, bad. That's actually enough to stop him from dying. And actually, Deathwing, he wouldn't have enough mana to to play the Deathwing. It's really interesting. Yeah, slides into. I mean, Cipher with some solid draws here. Those Berserkers, absolutely terrifying. What to do? So he still got problems to deal with. Cypher trying to figure out his way through this now. Tyrion, a fantastic draw. If it had come out any worse, he may have ended up uh, just taking a powder and saying, all right, we'll come back game four and see about it. Mirror Entity, just to get a little beef in case something comes down. Ooh, he might grab himself a Thorsan uh, if he puts that on. He's going to go Mad Scientist. And, uh... Okay, so that's pretty much it. Yep. Warsong Commander. Player. Pretty much any damage would have done it, um, especially the Warsong Commander and any additional weapons. Cypher sees it, he's going to let it happen, give himself time to roll through the next one. Harrison Jones going to come in, and there's the uh, walk away clean. Uh, Cypher going to brush his shoulders off because he knows everything's still okay. Gives a game over to Life Coach. He's got games to give. 
Uh, Life Coach did not, and again, taken to the brink and then pulls it right back with a smart, aggressive play at just the right time. Caught Cypher off guard. Really made him question his position and obviously uh, didn't have the stuff to finish the job or he would have done it with gusto. And now it's 2-1. Life Coach grabs himself a game. Yeah, and it's going to be a... Probably going to be a pretty long series. I'm not sure if Life Coach will queue him with the Druid next or if he'll go with his Hunter, but uh, you have to consider, like, I think Cypher eventually, no matter how the games go, I think he'll eventually take this because Tempo Mage is such a good matchup against mid-range Druid. Yeah, landed in a good spot there, but obviously, uh, you know, Patron Warrior, Life Coach found his way to it. He was having a little bit of a rough time through those first couple of draws, but as it rolled into the sort of middle turns, he, uh, he got himself... Uh, what he needed, got it out on the board, took a game. Good for him. I mean, if you're life coach, you got to take a pretty long bubble bath after this one. Relax, unwind, because uh, it's got to be some stressful play right there. I mean, just so many games taken right to the edge. Mm. Yeah, just just so great play overall from both players. It was kind of looking dire for life coach, and but you know, patron warrior because he got the he made the call to like put the patron warrior uh, patrons up. I think uh, he just was able to come back with the strength of the patron, uh, Grim Patron. But now it's that matchup that he's kind of been dreading all along. He has to win this. Um, and we already see in this hand is pretty good. Mirror Image once again. Flame Waker and even like Mirror Image is a card that you pretty much don't keep ever. But I think like in this matchup, it, it's possible that you keep it just because of how strong it is in the matchup. Looks like not going to hold on to it. Cypher anyway. And he'll pull Flame Waker out as things tick back over. Innervate there for Life Coach. He's got Wrath as well. Uh, but again, the high mana cards coming out to, uh, to haunt him just a little bit. And he's going to get a Force in Nature. No wild growth at the moment. He's going to spin that Wrath early on and just take care of that Mana Worm before it becomes a problem. As it very much did last game, but he managed to hold on very nicely. Um... Yeah, just getting minions out on the board, but unfortunately this will get pretty punished by the Druid of the Claw. It's pretty much like the um, like the best option here, and uh, even though like we talk about how this is such a, such a good matchup, um, Life Coach is finding ways to come back, or at least we're talking about Life Coach coming back, or at least Life Coach yeah. is finding a way to like stay on the board, like stay at least even. But the thing is, after that, then um, then like. Cypher still has plays. He has the Frostbolt. He has Arcane Intellect. But Life Coach, he just has the Ooze. And he'll have to just like draw into the next few cards. Yeah, the Ooze definitely going to bite him here uh, just a little bit. Not the worst thing in the world. You could certainly uh, end up in a worse spot. Uh, I think he may have been running Harrison in this deck as well. He's going to get the Claw out. Mirror Entity grab for Cypher. Going to be left on the board for two. So... Cypher so may want to clean that up. May just throw a spell down and say, you know, for, forget it. I'll take it. Take yeah, it. I think he can even consider the, the mirror entity here because um, he just probably wants to fill his curve as much as possible. And I don't think he minds taking four more damage from the Druid of the Claw. And indeed going to do it. Let's see what he throws down next. And, uh, might end up with a nice Swamp Ooze friend for himself. Harrison Jones, there he is. Indeed was running this deck. And uh, yeah. He is going to end up with a little Swamp Ooze friend, because why not? Nothing really else in to fill the time, so might as well slap that on. Hero power, bonk in the face, and, you know, not too bad. Yeah, it kind of acts like almost as a pseudo uh, zombie child in this matchup. If you don't run zombie child, which a lot of people have cut because aggressive decks are less common, and just patron decks and weapon classes are even more common than, than those aggressive decks. But, oh wow, that's certainly a huge draw. Two oh, frost, frost bolts. Bolt. Exactly. And even after that, I think uh, Cypher will be sitting pretty well because he'll be able to contest the uh, Harrison Jones that's coming along. But like, even though the Harrison Jones doesn't seem like a good draw, it at least allows Life Coach to play on curve. Yeah, lets him throw down five cost, and uh, you know one that needs to be answered as well. Not a guy that you can just leave out there five four. Doesn't bust a weapon, but hey, five damage is nothing to thumb your nose at. Gonna grab himself a fireball. Uh, he's still got his arcane intellect and his Drake as well, so he's got some card draw waiting in the wings if he's not happy with what he sees. But uh, got plenty to take care of Harrison here with just uh, the ping. He's gonna go intellect and get himself an entity and an unstable portal. Cypher's best friend so far, uh, give or take. 
You ever take best friends? Maybe they're good friends. They talk occasionally. Wild growth. And straight away throw the wild growth out there so we can get that uh, get that tucked in. Got a shape shift and uh, just love taps. And yeah, little nice answers so far for Life Coach. It's about the first time so far in the past while that we've been cast in Life Coach games that he's really felt like he's had a nice, solid answer here. He's managed to fill in the curve pretty nicely. Unstable portal for Cypher. <laughs> And a uh, really good uh, decision to play that mirror entity. I mean, you're, you see Life Coach has to be wild growth into something, so it could be possible that this turn, again, it's like locked out here because you can't just like throw a 5-5 five, five on the board. Yeah. Ancient Lore, and he'll get himself a big game hunter and a keeper of the grove. Wild growth tucked in and uh, uh, Cypher the Druid now. Not a bad time for a Sorcerer's Apprentice either. Yeah, and it's just like we predicted, even though Life Coach, he, uh, or rather Cypher, he had like a pretty bad start early on. It's just this matchup being so good with the double mirror entities that you can just play them as uh, a three mana weapon, or rather a three mana spell, and not be hurt by it. Yeah, and I mean, you get good value anytime you've got anything that's going to, you know, proc spells for increase. I mean, the mana worm synergy is just fantastic. Shade and Axe Ram is grabbed here for Life Coach pretty late into the run, and. Uh, Nothing really to answer for Cypher, but obviously it's going to have a hard time building up with that board looking like it is. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, what can you really do short of Force of Nature Savage Roar, which Life Coach doesn't even have? Yeah. He's got his Force of Nature. He's, he's, he's ready and raring to go, but uh, the, the Shade, the Shade wanted to come out. It was his turn. He was standing in line. Hmm. Wouldn't let... Uh, <laughs> Wouldn't let I mean, Savage that, Roar cut in front of the water slide. It probably would have been useful, like, maybe six turns ago oh, no. on turn three, but just a little late to the party, as Shades yeah. always are. They're kind of like the guys standing right Always. Behind. This is the worst, right? Making noises, weird clicky noises or whatever Shades sound like. This is <laughs> the worst. Piloted Shredder and a Keeper of the Grove. Yeah, he was not hoping, a, to, oh, hoping no. to top deck some Wrath, but that's not in the cards for him. That's so, I mean, damage. yeah, simple straight, simple trades straight across there and a man of worm pool for Cypher. He's got Drake sitting in there as well. If he wants to, you know, just see what's hanging out in his deck, um, get a little bit more on uh, onto the field. Just, I mean, but right now, obviously, it's uh, it might, you know, you've got good value on the field right now. It might be a little scary to throw that guy out. Uh, at the moment, uh, just in case Life Coach draws into something. So it's going to be Antonitis, and he's going to try and get some love there. Yeah. Interesting trades, because there's probably no secrets left in the deck. But, uh, like, and Antonitis is a 5-7. That's still okay. Like, Druids can't deal with these creatures anyway. So I think Life Coach, like, he's going to think about it for a bit. He might just wall growth here to draw a card, but eventually I think he's going to have to realize it's not his tournament to win, and Cypher will move on to the finals. Yeah, it's just a really slow ball rolling down, not a very steep hill for Life Coach. He's, yeah, there's just drawn into nothing, man. He doesn't have answers for any of this, and that mirror entity paid really big dividends that just put Life Coach behind for. The, the long run there. I mean, you know, no swipe to get him clear of anything. Just nothing. No savage roar. He needs a little bit of love, and he just wasn't getting it. So Life Coach counting it out right now. I mean, obviously, you're sitting 2-1 in a semifinals. You got to at least see what you grab, and he's going to. for no one. Is he? <laughs> is he going to? I thought the thing he was is, like, gonna. Life Coach plays Druid so much, and he knows the deck so well that he knows there's nothing he can do. Nah, I'm just gonna force the nature. There's not even a pilot of treader on the field to like end this off. I mean, he can clear some of it, I guess. He's gonna rope. Will he? Yeah. Now oh, he got it all done. Bravo. Oh, there's the top deck fireball. Fireball, and that'll write it up, Cypher. With some solid play here, I mean, just comfortable life coach. Managed to do good work, and oh, Cypher, look at him, hype! Well, the, the, motion. There's the dance that you were talking about. He does it yeah. once again. It's like he's going to his, like, his first 
Hearthstone Finals. And like, what better place to do it than the Vulcan Deckmasters, which has such a huge prize pool. I believe for this season alone, it's $50,000. Yes, sir. And I mean, hello, it's everybody. Say hello to Fade to Karma. I mean, a strong team here. Cypher, a very strong player. Life coach. Uh, I said it a million times, but the guy played some rough and ragged, some exhausting Hearthstone today. Uh, Cypher has just been on point since the morning. I mean, he, he had Kalento put him up against the wall. Cypher been tested as well. Nobody making it through this tournament without putting the work in, to say the very, very least. And I, I got to say... Congrats to Cypher, making it through to the finals. Life coach, good play. I was biting my nails the whole time, seeing if he'd pull anything out, but the draws weren't with him there. Uh, just great, man. Great stuff. Yeah, I mean, if you beat Kalento and Life Coach on the same day, which pretty much these two players are two of the most well-known and most respected players in Hearthstone, um, that has to be a great achievement. And a great achievement for his team as well. Like you said, like it's a new team. It's trying to get its name out there, and I think they've definitely succeeded today. Absolutely. And before we uh, wrap everything up, because that is going to be our last set of the day. Uh, I mean, thanks to all the players for fantastic games. Congratulations to Cypher. Um, and thanks to you for filling in, Monk. Uh, well, I'll come back. To, I'm going to swing back to it so I can shout you out. But don't you worry. I'm going to do all the... Mm -hmm. Do all the important stuff uh, first. Tomorrow, going to be running the same thing for the lower half of this bracket. It's going to be Strife Crow taking on Orange, Forsen taking on Toyta. I think it's how you're supposed to say that. I screwed it up and make fun of me. It's easy to do. Surrender and Trump have buys. So they will be the big boys sitting in the quarterfinal waiting to take out anybody who dares to challenge them. In this case, we saw both of the people with buys get taken out and... The plucky underdogs, if you will, moving on, except Kufdan, poor guy. Finn with a couple of uh, misplays early on. We were rooting for him. Kufdan, keep, uh, keep fighting, man. But uh, we'll be back tomorrow with the bottom half of the brackets and determine who is going to be joining Cypher in the finals proper. Monk, uh, I'm going to do some ads after you do your shout-outs. Tell the people where to find you, and thanks for saving Noxious's life by coming in when he was having the internet troubles of a lifetime. No problem. Glad to do so. You can find me. Well, just follow me at, on Twitter at liquid underscore monk. Uh, thanks. Uh, shout outs to you, of course, Wombat. That, thanks to, so shout out to the Vulcan as well for having me here today, just as a replacement for Noxious. And uh, shout out to the players for some pretty awesome games today. Just overall, really great. Well, back to you, Wombat. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, big, big love to you, Monk, for coming in, man. Saving the day because we were. <laughs> We were just like, everybody's busy. Oh, my God. Monk was there. And with the great insights, I mean, that's what that's what you love. When everybody's busy, Monk comes in, does a top quality job, filling in. Oh, beautiful stuff. Thanks for showing up, man. Of course, the Vulcan Deck Masters Tournament brought to you by Vulcan. Head on over to Vulcan.com slash Hearthstone. Check them out. Got some fantasy esports stuff going on. You can have the time of your life and you can win some real money doing it. Head over as well to Squarespace, the other major sponsor of this tournament, squarespace.com slash deckmasters. If you don't know how to make a website and you need a website or you want a website or you just like looking at websites and you're kind of bored and you think you might want to do something a little later today, head on over there. Take a look at them. Squarespace, great place to do stuff. If you don't really know what you're doing, so uh, I'd give them a look. And of course, big, big shouts to wellplayed.org, the boys who put on the production who kept us uh, who kept us from panicking when Noxious was falling apart at the seams. We sewed him back together. We've stuffed him in the corner. Uh, Monk's going to come in tomorrow and puppet him like a doll probably or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Congratulations again to Cypher for making it through to the finals. Good work to all the players. Thanks for watching, guys. We will see you tomorrow.